Harley expresses herself. Here's your look at the DC Collectibles Batman the Animated Series expression pack for Harley Quinn. This 30-piece set includes a 6-inch tall action figure that recreates Harley Quinn from the award-winning Batman the Animated Series. Choose from 8 different head expressions that range from playfully mischievous to seriously deranged, as well as an unmasked version. Also included are her two hyenas, multiple pieces of trademark weaponry, roller skates, and a fish head. I thought it would be fun to take dimensions of Harley Quinn sporting her Harleen Quinzel head. So that's where we're going to start this review. And we're going to start this review as well by measuring off how tall the figure stands. From her feet to the very top of her pigtails, Harley Quinn stands at 5.3 inches in height, which in centimeters works out to be 13.4 centimeters tall. Let's get this out of the way. She does come included with a similar display stand to the Expression Pack Batman and the Expression Pack Joker that we've already had a look on, on this channel. Nothing really different by, by the way on the display stand. It's featuring multiple pegs, sort of a plastic slice of Swiss cheese. Now where it does say play more favorite to Batman or Joker as being the preferred stand to go with, the unfortunate problem with this display stand is not necessarily the clear stand itself. Instead, it's the adjustable neck that comes included with the figure. It only adjusts in three places. Here at the bottom of the knuckle, the mid knuckle and top knuckle respectively, if that's how you want to describe these joint points on the neck. But the problem is it's way too long. Anywhere that you put the neck, let's say we put it into this part of the display stand, which can be a problem all on its own, you'll see right off the bat, it's already way too tall for the figure. Now this is fine if you want to display the figure in a leaping pose. In fact, I'll show you even in the instructions, they've got Batman depicted kind of in mid-flight. He's leaping off of the base. Well, I don't really think of that for Harley Quinn. So, unfortunately, this is as low as it goes. Whereabouts are you going to put this on the figure? Right about her neck area? That makes no sense whatsoever. At the very least, they should have done something similar to what uh, Diamond Select does, where they have similar adjusted necks. I so happen to have one over here on the side. Here's one that came included with, I believe, their Slimer figure. And it could take some cues because it can section off, giving you a smaller display stand if you wanted to use a smaller display stand. Unfortunately, with DC Collectibles, they give you just one long, one long that can be, in theory, bent this, this halfway point. But again, it's still way too tall if you want to just have the figure standing upright. I think what they also probably should have considered doing as well, let me just put the figure right here. I think she's going to fall over. I think what they also should have done was taken these out as an option of what you could display the figure with as well, but they should have also given you little pegs, just pegs that you could put on the display stand, and then maybe those pegs could have had like little, little clips, because unfortunately one of the problems with the DC collectible figures is they don't have peg holes on the undersides of their feet. Sad. So, if you want to display the figure, you're ultimately just gambling on the fact that the figure's going to be able to stand upright. Probably not want to make use of this display stand unless you want to put Harley Quinn in a dynamic pose. I can tell you one individual that does not want to do that, and that would be me. Trying not to be overly dramatic, however, let's talk about all the accessories that come included with the figure. Now, being that this is a Batman Animated Series Expression Pack, you're going to be getting as much as what you've gotten with the Batman and the Joker if you manage to pick those up along the way. By the way, I do apologize for the delay in getting this figure. I had to unfortunately wait until my comic book store restocked it, and then that has led us to this destination in our journey. Let's have a look at the figure. We, uh, like I said, we'll start with a Harleen Quinzel head sculpt. This is the one I opted to go with at the beginning of this review, kind of then moving forward along, and then we can give her her trademark Harley Quinn look. 
I will say that the head sculpt on Harleen Quinzel is passable. I would not say it's necessarily great. I think it could have been a lot better. It's missing its mark, and I can't quite put my finger on what exactly is wrong with the head sculpt. I can tell you it's much more of a looser head sculpt to be putting on the, the very long neck that they've given her. Uh, it sits on there, but it sits very loose. You can kind of... it's a bit of a bobblehead, actually, when you put it in place. I don't find any of the other Harley Quinn heads, heads seem to have that problem. Again, the head sculpt is passable. Is it great? Mm, it's it's passable. It's, it could have been better. How about that? We'll say it could have been a lot better. I find sometimes some of these Batman animated series figures that DC Collectibles have released have either been real hits or slight misses. I might chalk this one up, at least this head sculpt, sculpt up, to be a little bit more of a miss than I think it would be a successful hit. We're going to put the figure down right here for one split second. And again, hoping hoping that the figure is going to stand upright. She has very, very small, tiny, tiny feet. Speaking of feet, one thing that she does come included with is a pair of roller skates, which is pretty cool, I have to admit. We're going to go ahead and take the feet. I don't really like doing this, I have to admit. The feet sit on pegs. Now, if you take the peg off, that's really small. You're asking a lot out of that peg to not break. Oh, geez, now that I've said that. I'm going to pop the roller skates in place. We're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. I only am showing you this accessory right now because I think it's more akin to the unmasked Harley Quinn head, personally. I mean, it's not to say that you couldn't have displayed the figure with roller skates if you wanted to use it for, like, the makeup to Harley Quinn. But just to show you what the roller skates look like with this head sculpt, there's, there is right there. It's pretty cool, I have to admit, that DC Collectibles throws in all these little nods to the show. Roller skates are not something I would ever have pictured, and I think I actually did put the feet on the wrong way. Oh, skiddly do. They did look like they were on the right way. There we go. Just so that somebody could not... You put them on the wrong way. There we go. That's for you, sir. Heckler in the back. Um, I do like the fact that they include these little nods. These fan nod episode little things. Uh, DC Collectibles is really good for that. Ultimately, it still kind of boils down to a figure that these DC collectible Batman animated series figures still can be a little on the spindly side. I'll talk about a little bit more of that in, in, in a second, but I just want to take off those roller skates, put on back her little elf shoes. Both her hands and her feet are problematic. Well, if you've seen these, picked up these in your days, or really have seen any of these reviews that I've done, thank you for that, by the way, uh, you'll know that these figures are notorious for having bad pegs, especially in the hands, something of which we will talk about in a second. Hoping that she's not going to fall. Nah, there she goes. She falls over. We're just going to leave her. She can take a nap. Let's have a look at all the accessories that she comes included with. I want to draw your attention, one thing, to the instruction guide. I could be a little bit more aggressive, I think, with the backdrop now. Now that I know she's not going to stay in place. She's fallen over. I want to draw your attention to this. No, not the fish head. No, not the regular Harleen Quinzel head. But I want to draw your attention to these instructions here. How would you decipher these instructions? I would think, in my opinion, I would think, I would think that all three of these items can go into both of these guns. Would you not believe that that also be the case? I mean, they've got these lines all connecting these three items, and those lines, that one long line, is connecting to both weapons. I can tell you that that's not the case at all. I don't even know why they would have shown it the way that they did. Of the things that you can put into the weapons, you've got the punching bag, which obviously is not going to fit into the pistol. You've got the smoke, which obviously can go into the pistol. And then you seem to have a bottle of booze, a bottle of beer, a bottle of wine. I don't know why that is connecting into this or is connecting into this. Okay, so we've taken a mental image of this. You've taken, absorbed all of that. Okay, let's put that to the side. So let's look at those three items respectively. We, of course, got the little 
I would say cap gun. And then of course you've got the smoke. The smoke can attach, so we will, I guess it depends on which way you want to have the smoke, but let's say we attach it this way. There we go. You've got a little bit of smoke coming out of the pistol. That's a good, f I like that. That's, that's a plus. That's a positive. We'll put that on the positive side. We can, of course, dismiss for the fact that, don't think, maybe it will. Oh, maybe it will. Ah, get it on there. Okay, so punching bag successful. We'll put a check over there. And then you've got this, which, again, kind of looks like a little bottle. This is supposed to fit onto the end. And having tried this prior to the review, it does. It doesn't look like it should be in there, though. It looks out of place. Perhaps if it ties itself into an episode of Batman Animated Series, it's certainly lost on this reviewer's, uh, certainly lost on me as to why that is the case. It does plug into place. Okay, so from the pistol end of it, everything successfully plugs into that. Now we can take the bazooka. I love saying bazooka. And there is the green painted bazooka with some nice gray accents added in there and even painted in the little scope in blue. Now there's only one place where this everything goes. Okay, so we're gonna go, I know that the punching bag will fit into that, as it certainly does. But once again, I wanna draw your attention right there, there to the instructions. Well, we know all three of them go into, oh, I see. Somebody, <laughs> somebody just would have corrected me on this. They don't all go through into this. All three go into the cap gun, to the pistol. But you'll see there's a broken arrow right there. No, not starring Christian Slater and John Travolta. Good movie, by the way. The broken arrow indicates that only this item goes into here. I guess this could have been the easiest way that they would have done this. I feel like there could have been a better way to indicate this. Maybe there isn't. So, correcting myself, three items go into the pistol. Only the punching bag goes into said bazooka. Time I'm sure everybody want, would, would love to have back right now. So, there's the bazooka. It does look good. Like I said, it's got the additional dark gray in there mixed with the bright coloring of the green. I do like the look of that. It does fit into her hand. I'll show you that in a second as well. Some of the other accessories that come included with the figure, you get yourself a very rubbery utility belt. Very pliable. Kind of feels like it's made out of gummy candy. Um, it is painted all in yellow. In fact, I would even dare say it's been molded all in yellow as well. And like I said, it's very pliable. Uh, in theory, it could fit over Harley Quinn's torso. Fit over her waist, that is. Maybe would explain also why they made it rubbery. You could fit it over her waist like this. I'm sure it does serve another purpose as well. Maybe, I don't think it would pair with Batman, because Batman's already got his utility belt. So Harley Quinn's got like a little rubbery utility belt that she could wear. Again, I would understand why this has to be rubber, simply for the way it has to fit over her legs, fit over her thighs, and then eventually situate itself, slightly draping onto her waist. She does come with that as well. I know we should got a whole lot of stuff still to cover. Okay, okay, okay. I know you guys got places to go. People, people you need to see. Oh, you know what? I'm just going to lay her down because I know she's going to fall over again. Once again, further continuing on with the accessories, Harley Quinn also comes with a Joker Jester cane. I do like the look of this quite a bit, actually. It's got a very scary sort of later look to Joker. I like the black eyes on there, the big yellowish smile painted quite nicely as well. No hiccups that I can see. Hiccup! Okay, maybe there's one right there. She comes with that. Uh, she comes, of course, with her heads. She comes with some interchangeable hands, probably all of which we could look at later. And then she comes with her trusty hyenas, both unique to one another. The bodies look like they are the same. The tails uh, do have some possibility to them. You just twist those around. The head sculpts, like I said, are different from one another. I love the fact that we do get ourselves hyenas packaged along with Harley Quinn. There is posability on both of these, depending on which one you want to focus your efforts on. I kind of like this one a lot. He's, you know, he's laughing. His head rotates. 
its head rotates. I'm assuming, are they both males? Their heads rotate back and forth on the legs, back and forth on the hind legs, and then of course the tail rotates. Coloring on both of them, though similar in paint, look good on both of them. I, again, I like this one. You'll probably see attention being drawn over to the one I'm nodding over here on the right. But again, I like the fact that they're both unique to one another. So she comes with those as well. Okay. Then she comes with something rather unique. And I love the fact that they include this. It's the fish head that she sports, complete with a less than stellar expression, only by the eyes that you can see inside. Love the fact that they painted the eyes. Um, it is only pegged by that little hole on the end. So what you need to do, you have to take the Harley Quinn head, pop this off, and then in theory, you're supposed to be able to fit it over top. And it sort of just plugs in place like that. And uh, this only aids to make her even more top heavy. Oh, a display stand so could have come in handy right now. No, no, not that other display stand. That's not going to come in handy. Uh, I feel like the head doesn't fit in all the way. And yet, there it is. The proof is in the pudding. It does plug completely in place. A nice little, once again, nod to the animated series. Fish head looks great. Not that I would necessarily display the figure with this, but I like the fact that DC Collectibles would include such a giant accessory like this. Then we have a look at, okay, we'll have a look at her hands. I wanna talk a little bit about these hands. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay, so the problem with the hands is the same problem I continue to have with DC Collectible figures, specifically the Batman animated series figures. The female figures, not so much the males, but the females have awfully thin pegs. Let me see if I can take this one out. Oh, it creaks, it squeaks. There's one of the pegs right there. The hard part though, is when you are putting it back into the socket, depending on which hand you wanna use. Uh, for example, she does come with, for her red hands, a trigger firing hand. And then she also comes with a, a relaxed hand. For the black hands, uh, she does have one that I've already got in place or slightly in place of a trigger hand. And then she also has a closed fist and she also has a relaxed hand as well. So let's say I wanna use the trigger hand. Well, unfortunately the problem with this is you don't wanna to apply too much pressure because I feel like I'm gonna be breaking the peg. This happens all the time and happened badly, I think, from what I remember with the recent Batgirl that I looked at, also from the Batman animated series line. You feel as if you're almost pushing the peg beyond the point that it should be pushed, and then you feel like you're gonna be breaking the peg. One workaround to that I found was twisting the peg, but if it does also get stuck, lodged as if it doesn't want to move any further, and then you start twisting it again, you're of course going to start developing stress marks, and that peg is going to break right off. The hardest part is even though I'm critiquing something like that as a negative, I couldn't even possibly think of an alternative solution. I can't. Based on the size of the figure, based on the size of the peg hole, I can't think of any other way that this could have been worked around other than giving the peg exactly the same size as what they currently gave her. It's just unfortunately, it's just the, it's just the idea that the figure is already small as it is, so everything on it is shrunken down, thinner than what normal figures would be. And that also entails when it comes to pegs, and of course the pegs in the feet. They just are by merits, smaller, much tinier than larger size figures, which is such a pain in the butt. Okay, so those are all the accessories, those are all the hands, those are all the things that come include with the figure, and then of course we've got the display stand that is just so, so passable for me. Let's have a look at all the various heads. After all, this is the expressions pack, and the expression, she does come with a wide range of expressions actually. I guess the one that most people are familiar with the most is this head sculpt right here. Now, it doesn't have the bobbling problem that this head sculpt had, it stays in place, it doesn't go anywhere, it doesn't have the bobbling action. This is kind of the defaulted head sculpt. I believe this was the first Harley Quinn that we had gotten from Batman the Animated Series, at least of the DC collectible variety. So everybody probably knows this head sculpt by now. It's acceptable, it's passable, it's not exciting. I mean, it's just sort of default. That's the best way I could describe it, is just default. Then we get to a much more exciting territory. And some of these head sculpts are good, some of these head sculpts are misses. 
So like, for example, we have this head sculpt. And this is kind of like, I don't, I don't really know. I want to say crazy. It's almost as if she's caught someone's attention. One big giant eye, one smaller eye. I consider this one a bit of a miss. This is of the miss variety. Then she also comes, let me just pop that one off, with this head sculpt. I feel like I'm working my way up, starting with the more disappointing head sculpts and working to what I believe is the more progressively better head sculpts as we go through each and every one of them. Okay, so then we have this one. Kind of squinted, squinted eye Harley Quinn. You know, you can see a little bit of her eyes. Her mouth expression is also a little bit different than this one right here. So you can see there. The face isn't quite white. In fact, it almost kind of looks like it would be translucent plastic. It's got like a slight bluish tint to it as well. Again, it's not a great head sculpt, but we're making progress. As we move further up and bettering our chances, then we've got this head sculpt right here. Now, this is kind of a sad Harley Quinn. No doubt, I'm sure the Joker has said something to offend her. Poor Harley. Again, the head sculpt is okay. There's certainly better ones on here. And I feel like some of the head sculpts, though maybe taking cues from the Batman Animated Series episodes in which these were sculpted from, I feel like some of them feel almost as if they're just thrown in. They're filler head sculpts. Like, for example... Well, I guess this head sculpt is good if you wanted to just have a traditional Harley Quinn, maybe if you didn't pick up this figure the first go-around. This head sculpt, like I said, it's okay. I'm not super crazy about it. This kind of falls within that same sort of territory. So there's that one. Let me also just say I'm glad the fact that the ball joint is molded to the neck. It makes taking off the heads so much easier. So, so much easier. Then we got this one right here. I'm trying my best to leave off continuing to say head sculpt. So this one is actually pretty good. So, sort of a surprised Harley Quinn. And I'm digging this one. I like this one. But I don't think any of them are like extreme wow factor heads. Where I'm looking at the head sculpts. Like Joker. Joker's expression pack. The one that we had already looked at on this channel. Feel free to check that out if you want. I think had more iconic Joker heads. Some of these are good. Most of these I feel is, are, are almost just throw in heads. And then, of course, we've got this head sculpt. Kind of like Harley Quinn is in trouble, or has gotten into trouble. It is slightly off-putting the coloring of her face. If it wasn't so much, glue, uh, so much blue happening, that bluish tint, it almost seems as if her face is pulsating. It's kind of glowing a little bit. So there's, there's almost the gotten in trouble Harley Quinn. I guess one of the my favorites is this head sculpt right here. And this is the one that we opened the review with. Sort of the angrier Harley Quinn. You know, looking at it though, there is not really a great head sculpt if you want to just like a, a playful, sinister Harley Quinn. One that has a big smile on her face. Again, we kind of have to go back to the original head sculpt to accomplish that. But I feel like we've gotten better head sculpts I believe there was even like the Mad Love, which I also looked at on this channel, had a few extra head sculpts that weren't here. We'd have to go back and find that figure again. But this is probably my favorite head sculpt here. Probably followed closely. I kind of also like this one here, the minus the hair, the surprised Harley Quinn head sculpt. Again, the preference is entirely yours as to which one you want to go with. Maybe even let me know down below which one you'd like as your personal favorite Harley Quinn head sculpt. Just kind of looking at the rest of them here. This one's kind of nice too. So I think three out of the, what, seven or eight head sculpts that we got. These two, these two, plus I'm going to go with, I think these are my personal favorites. Let me just move. There we go. I think these are my personal favorites, these three head sculpts. Again, it's, it's just... Just my own personal opinion. So I'm going to pop this head sculpt off. And I'm going to go with... 
going to go with this one for, I think, the rest of this review. That's the beauty of these expression packs is that you can mix and match them. Are they still as good as the Jokers? Which I think the Jokers is by far the best expressions pack that we've gotten so far. Again, if you haven't watched the video, go check it out. But let's run through her posability. Now, her head rotates all the way around. The one problem with the head sculpt, though, is it always seems to want to sit really low. It always wants to sit on an angle. It's kind of the way that the neck has been bent, as you can see this way here. The neck isn't standing straight up, and to compensate for that, you can bring the head up, but it does make her neck look much longer. One thing that you have to kind of work around. But being that it's also a ball joint, the head rotates fully all the way around. You can angle it back and forth, and you can also angle it up and down. The shoulders hinge out. Now, here's a problem with the figure. The shoulders hinge to about here. I keep trying and bringing more force and pressure to it, but I think it's telling me you don't need to go any further there, fella. You're going to be doing something that you're going to regret later on. You're going to get yourself a broken shoulder. Not you. The figure is going to get a broken shoulder. So the shoulders also allow the arms to rotate all the way around. She does have a bend at the elbow, which does actually work both ways. But you got to be careful when you're bending it the opposite way. Once again, you're going to start hitting resistance. It's going to tell you, even though that hinge is there, you don't want to bend it any further than that, my friend, because there's actually a little stopping tab right there, if you can see it. It does prevent the elbow from going any bit further back from that. So even though you are seeing a hinge on both sides, don't make the mistake that you accidentally rotate this around and think that that's a hinge. Because as soon as you bend it, that's going to stop for one second, compose itself, and then it's going to break right off. You don't want that. You never want that. Uh, once again, the hands, the hands, there's a little hair there, the hands rotate all the way around, and then you've got a hinge happening back and forth on the hands. Nothing in the waist, legs split, there we go, forward and back on the legs, she has a bend at the knee, and then she, unfortunately, because it's not a ball joint, the feet only allow her to swivel, or the feet only swivel all the way around. This also can cause some problems when it comes to displaying the figure because, well, if you don't have a display stand, which this figure really, really unfortunately doesn't, if you don't have a display stand, you're only at the mercy of her little tiny feet. Again, I can't stress this enough how small these feet are. Both her and Poison Ivy, I think, have some of the smallest feet of the Batman animated series lineup. As a whole, I'm sort of on the fence when it comes to this figure. I mean, for all its merits, it does give you a lot to go with. I mean, it's a much more expensive figure as well, being that it has all these extra accessories to work from. But at the end of the day, I still feel like the best expressions pack that we have gotten from DC Collectibles wasn't Harley Quinn. It wasn't Batman. But instead, it was the Clown Prince of Crime, the Joker himself. In final looks, I have the fish head now put on Harley Quinn as one of the possible options for the way you can display the figure. I'm also making use of the display stand as best I can. I suppose you could go in there with a screwdriver, loosen the screw, and just take one of the sections off altogether. That sort of defeats the purpose. I think this stand should have easily come with a second adjustable neck, one that was much shorter, or at the very least, there should have been like a clip or something that could have fit around her waist. This long neck may work for Batman, may possibly even work for Joker, which I don't even think I used for Joker, but it certainly doesn't work for Harley Quinn. I guess you could have her leaping up in the air and firing off the bazooka or missile launcher. I don't think many people call it bazookas anymore, but I don't think the display stand serves any purpose whatsoever. It looks ridiculous right now, even just the way I've displayed it, but I've done this to prove a point, just to show you that it really doesn't help the figure at all. It just hinders the figure more than anything else, and it makes it look just as ridiculous as Harlequin here is with the big giant fish head on her head. Okay, so the figure itself, like I said, does have a wide range of different options and different accessories for the way you want to display your Harley Quinn. It's a nice upgrade and a well-deserved upgrade to the original Harley Quinn that we have gotten. I think up to this point, this might have been the fourth Harley that we had gotten released because we had gotten a re-released Harley single pack. And then we had also gotten ourselves the Mad Love Harley Quinn that I've also had a look at on this channel. This one, like I said, is the upgrade. It gives you the hyenas. It gives you the multiple heads. But I think only some of the heads are actually that good. I mean, the one head, I mean, the one head that's Harley and Quinzel, I think is pretty good. 
but I think the other head, of course, is just a throw-in from the original Harley Quinn that we had gotten before. And then there's a various other, if you excuse my ignorance for saying this, there's just a whole bunch of filler heads. I mean, sure, some of them are pretty good. I guess three out of the batch. Three isn't fantastic, but at least three gives you something to work with. And I guess the fish head's pretty cool, too, as well. So three out of, what, eight or so heads that they come include with the figures. Like I said, most of them feel almost as if they're just throw-ins, afterthoughts, if you will. Anyone, I'm sure, who is an avid Batman the Animated Series fan could probably pinpoint episode times in which this character was wearing said specific expression but i just think that some of the heads the head expressions i think could have been a lot better at the end of the day i just wanted a big smiling harley quinn and i know we got that with the defaulted head but they could have probably thrown a couple of those in there as well even like also a screaming harley quinn well which we did get but i feel like they're close but no cigar Either way, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, unfortunately this figure is a slightly older figure. It's still available, but not probably as available as some of the newer release stuff that's hitting store shelves. By the way, also, has anyone noticed that we haven't really gotten a whole bunch of Batman animated series figures from DC Collectibles? The plan is we are going to be moving into a Justice League lineup soon, and I can't wait for that. But I hope that we will still get some more of Batman animated series and the new Batman Adventures figures as well, because the collection is pretty good. It's unfortunately still plagued with uh, very small, thin joints and knees and stuff like that that become loose over time. I still have a whole bunch of figures that have gotten loose over time. But for, the, for what it is, this lineup has still proved to be pretty good. Uh, DC Collectibles, to their credit, has given us many, many uh, episode nods and fan nods to some of these characters. I mean, we're literally looking in final looks at Harley Quinn with a giant fish head on her head. I mean, that says something for the faithfulness that DC Collectibles are putting into their lineup. The fact that we have a Harley Quinn here with a fish head. I'll leave that with your thought. I'll leave that thought with you. Today, like I said, we were having a look at the DC Collectibles. This was the Batman Animated Series Expression. Batman Animated Series Harley Quinn Action Figure Pack. That's what the packaging says. That's a really long title. I'm probably just going to call it the Harley Quinn Expressions Pack. Call it a day. If your day isn't over, you're not calling it a day just yet, and want to check out some more reviews from me, feel free to check out my playlist of the various, I think I've covered them all by now, of the Batman Animated Series lineup from DC Collectibles. Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below, because certainly more videos also will be coming your way soon. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.